Desmos just dropped a brand new hypothesis testing tool and I am so excited to share it with you. We're gonna take a look at how to use that tool along with other tools in Desmos to do a complete hypothesis test of the mean. We're gonna do a t-test. I'm gonna use this assignment that I gave to my students just last week as an example. So for this particular challenge, we wanna know if the average age of students in our data set is significantly different in age than the average community college student in Washington State. Now, according to the state website, that average age is 24. Um, we're gonna test at the 0.05 significance level. Okay, so I'm gonna also underline significantly different than. If I scroll down, here's what we need to do, and Desmos is gonna help us with quite a bit of it. We need to do the null and alternative hypothesis. Desmos can't help with that, but Desmos will help with the critical, and we're gonna be doing a T-score here. Desmos will help with the critical and the test score. Then of course, we need to make that decision to either reject or fail to reject, but we need to include a picture of that curve with the rejection regions labeled. Desmos will help us with that as well. Let's start with the hypotheses though. So the claim says um, that the average age in our data set is significantly different. So as I put our hypotheses together, we've got our null hypothesis, H sub zero. We're hypothesizing about the actual mean, which we call mu. And we're gonna assume that the state average is correct at 24. Our alternative hypothesis is really our claim, but still about the actual mean. We think that it might be different, significantly different. That means we're gonna use not equals here, not equals 24. That actually gives us a two tail test. Desmos is going to do this way better than me with um, a rejection region on both ends. Let's do that test T score next. Now I'm here at desmos.com and I want to go to open that graphing calculator. I want to show you where it is and then we'll get our data in here. So to run this inference, this statistical test, we're going to click on the plus button in this upper left and notice that it shows up right here under inference. Now it gives us several different options. We want to do that t-test and that t-test either needs our data or it needs our sample size, mean, and standard deviation. Let me click the X and go get our data. Now my students took a survey. There's a lot of values in here. The age is here in the yellow column. I'm just gonna select all of this data. There's a lot of it. So I'm gonna click on that first data value and then scroll down. And then for that last data value, I'm gonna hit shift and then click. To copy it, I do a control C to copy. If you're on a Mac, you might do a command C. Over to the graphing calculator. Before I drop my data into an empty cell, let's click on that cell and give our data list a name. It's gonna make life so much easier. I'm gonna call it A for age equals. Now I'm ready to drop it in. I'm gonna do a control V as in Victor, or you would do a command V. So I've got my entire 54 element list. Just because I wanna show you both ways to do this, either with the data or with the stats, I'm gonna ask Desmos quickly for a mean of my data set, and I'm also gonna ask it for the sample standard deviation, which is STDEV of A. So I've got both of those values. Let's run the hypothesis test. Let's run that inference. Putting our cursor in an empty cell, I'm gonna grab that plus sign in the upper left corner, and then I want inference, and we are gonna do the t-test, and it says, do you want data or stats? So I'm gonna put the stats in here first. A lot of these hypothesis tests just come with a sample size, a sample mean, and a sample standard deviation. Here's how you would do those. I've got 54 in my sample. I've got a sample mean of 21.2777, um, and then I'll just put an eight there, and a sample standard deviation of 7.71, seven five five seven five five. if I rounded that correctly, and then I could hit create test, but I want to show you how to do it with the data instead. So let's click on data and I want to run it with my list A. So since my data is here and we named it A, just need to hit A and then click create test. We do not need the standard deviation and the mean. Let's get rid of those so I've got some more room. So I've got my t-test. I don't want the confidence interval for this example. I want the significance test. I'm almost there. It says our null hypothesis is mu equals zero, but our null hypothesis was mu equals 24. So I'm gonna change that by clicking on the zero and then changing that to a 24. Um, tails, I do have two tails. If you had a less than in your alternative hypothesis, it would be on the left. 
if you had a greater than in your alternative hypothesis, it would be pointing to the right, but we do want both here. And it gives me that test T value. So as I go back, I've got my um, hypotheses and I've got my test T score and that was a negative 2.788. Eight. We still need the critical t-score and a picture of our curve. Now for most of my homework, it actually wants four decimal places, not the three that I've got here in the preview, but we can get there by clicking on the three dots. You can get more information, more details. That t-score is already giving me more decimal places. Same with that p-value, but I could click on this little export button and it will give me even more values. I'm actually going to click off of this we wanted those critical scores next. To get to those critical scores, we wanna look at the T distribution. So I'm gonna click on an empty cell. You can type in T dist parenthesis, if you remember what it's called, or just go to your keypad. Let me click that. I'm gonna open my keypad and then over here to functions. I want distributions, let me scroll down. There they are, probability distributions, and I want that T dist. It's asking me for the degrees of freedom, and the degrees of freedom is right here, 53, 54 minus one, and minus one. So I've got 53 right here for my degrees of freedom. Let's close the keypad, and you can see that I've got kind of a funky looking curve here. I'm gonna click the zoom fit to get a better looking curve. Now we wanted to find those critical values. So I'm gonna expand my cumulative probability. And then what do I want? I wanted those two outer tails to match the sketch that I've got on my work. To get the two outer tails, I'm gonna choose outer. Okay, it's looking better already. And I wanna compute the bounds for my rejection tails. I don't wanna compute the area. So let's click on bounds. And I'm gonna change this area to be 0 0.05, which is my significance level. So I've got 0 0.05, I've got my two rejection regions here. And I can see that I've got critical values of plus and minus 2.006. If you needed more decimal places, click the down arrow. You've got your additional decimal, oops, click the down arrow. You've got your additional decimal places here. You can also export it into an empty cell. So we've got those critical T scores. Let me go ahead and check this off. And they're gonna be plus or minus 2.006, 2.006. These say that I need to be at least 2.006 standard deviations away from 24, that expected mean, in order to be significantly different. Let's go ahead and get these values labeled. To label them, I'm gonna to go to my wrench here and clean the graph up. I do want it to be in a little bit bolder view. I'm gonna get rid of the grid, get rid of the axis numbers. I want the X axis, I want it to look like my little sketch over here. So I just wanna get rid of that Y axis. Okay, that is looking great but I want to label my critical values and my test value. Okay, so to do that, I'm going to actually get rid of this. Let's label those um, critical values first since I've got them right in front of me. I'm going to label them as points. They live on the x-axis, so I've got one at negative 2.006 comma zero parenthesis, and I can add a label there. And this is going to be my, um, what do I call my critical value? TC is equal to negative 2.006. I want it to be red to match what I've got there in the graph. Okay, red. And I'm just going to leave it where it is. Let's do the other one. So 2.006, the positive cutoff, comma, zero. And I want to label this one as well. Move this up out of the way. Label this one as well. And this would be my positive critical T value equals 2.006. And I want this one to be red as well. So this one's going to be red as well. I'm just going to leave it there on the graph. Now let's put in, let's get rid of this. Now let's put in my test value. To put in the test value, I can even drop in the shaded region that represents the p-value. I'm gonna click the three dots and I want to export significance diagram. It's gonna put it right on top of the one I've got. And of course it did it here as red. I do not want it red. Let me click and hold this to change the color. I'm gonna change it to blue instead. Now if I zoom in, you can barely, barely, barely see, here it is. You can see where that p-value area is. This is gonna be 2.788 standard deviations away. 
Let's label that test value also so it matches what I've got here in the preview. So I'm just gonna grab, I want negative 2.788. Let's grab another empty cell and just drop a point in. So parentheses, negative 2.788 comma zero. I wanna label on this one as well, and it's already blue, which is perfect. And this is going to be my test T equals um, negative 2.788. Okay, so I've got my test T there. I think I've got everything that I needed to label, which leaves me with just my decision and my summary. Well, from my graph now, I can see that I need it to be 2.006 standard deviations away, but I'm actually better than that. I'm 2.788 standard deviations away from our average of 24, which means that we are significantly different. We would reject that null hypothesis. I'd love to know how you use hypothesis testing in Desmos. I've got another video for you here.